it's been great to work here at the Civic in Tala, um, which is where Solo Sirens is based and where most of our collective live. With Solo Sirens, we do look at personal narratives and personal stories a lot. And of course, when you look at personal stories, you end up confronting loss. So the group had been in that territory before, so it was a, there was a bridge, but this was a deeper and maybe a more spacious experience of that very particular yeah. issue and set of themes. And I think when we were beginning the workshops and we were inviting the collective to become part of it, you know, saying we're, the workshops are going to be about loss and about grief. It was kind of very daunting at the beginning. How are we going to navigate this? What's it going to be like? And actually it, it became very apparent kind of week one, week two, that it, it wasn't, it didn't have that heaviness that we may have anticipated it would have. It actually had an almost kind of uplifting kind of at times. It was like a weight was lifted mm. in the room, being able to have a space to discuss and explore loss and love, really. We came in at all angles, like the, we went into the hard beats, we went into the soft beats, we went into the beats we had never touched. We even explored elements of loss that society or with like sort of an unwritten agreement that you shouldn't grieve about or even how how that should look. All loss has to be acknowledged. I, one of my biggest discoveries were that there are some losses that we, con we might consider small but they still stay. So if you get through something, maybe you lose a job or you lose a pet you love, whatever. You know, you need to take space and time to acknowledge that and feel the pain so that you can release it. Realizing that you experience loss in big ways and small ways throughout your life, I think it was really, really beneficial to see all these women who maybe had fresh wounds and old wounds and ones that were big and ones that were small. All the knowledge, everything I've experienced and learned was definitely gonna go forward with me every day. Each workshop there was always kind of like a core theme or a core like things like love and loss or first loss or loss and ritual and and that would happen through a series of story sharing exercises, movement exercises, individual writing. Sometimes it was just sitting there and just feeling like depending on whether you're the one expressing the loss or the one supporting or observing the one who's going through the loss then the movement Really, it took any shape depending on what you were feeling. And then when we included music, it also had different components to it. Like I come from a culture where even during grief, they dance. <laughs> during celebrations of love, they dance. And you find that they bring different things and they invoke different movements. So we realized that even without music, we have a lot of that that happens, that if you just stop talking, create a space or a way or a, a, a ritual to acknowledge that loss, even if there are no words. So we're looking like a wordless way of expressing your loss. It's about holding space for each other. And when you do that and you listen to others, then you automatically see, you know, the commonalities that we do have. It's also, you can break it down into minutiae as well and just look at one aspect of it so it doesn't feel so overwhelming. You're not taking on the whole broad scope of grief and loss and, and all that at once. You're kind of examining little small personal moments or pieces of it. And then we would always at the end close off too. So in the same way that we needed to warm up coming in, we needed to kind of warm down going out because the workshop would tend to travel to quite a deep space and then we needed to kind of lift ourselves maybe through a bit of dance or through a bit of a shake off or something that would get us ready to go out into the world again. We learned from the Compassion and Culture Network on our regular Zooms that coming towards the end of the workshops for those who already had, it's it, a momentum builds and it can get quite challenging coming towards the end. But we learned that before we came towards the end and we were like, okay, bracing yeah. ourselves. Going. And actually, yes, it did happen. Yeah. It, it was like that. A small group like this, uh, with people who care about you, who are not pushing you to get over it or to do something, to just give yourself you space to be and do whatever you feel like, is so valuable to a person and it's so enriching to, to a life that 
everybody should have. Those are the type of friends we, we all hope we had, right? Friends who allow us to be ourselves and who don't get so uncomfortable about our pain that they push us away or they try to get us to jump off it so quickly that we, we, do, we don't have the space to, to, to bear it because that's what you need to do.